Hello friends, here is today's Sunday Whispers entitled The Morning After, written by Rod Lee. Let us begin with today's Bible Whisper from Matthew chapter 5, verse 4. It reads, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Almost three millennia ago, through the prophet Isaiah, the Lord has spoken this beautiful message of comfort and hope. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. Before his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus quoted this Old Testament scripture in the synagogue and pointed this messianic prophecy to himself. Luke chapter 4 verses 16 to 21. There is no doubt he is the only one who can offer us true comfort when we are faced with the vicissitudes of life. Are you experiencing grief yourself due to a circumstance beyond your control or saddened by the loss of someone beloved? If you have gone through it, you know how terribly draining it is. It sucks out your physical strength, mental energy, and spiritual vitality. We must admit that we all have our times of mourning. We will never experience comfort until we enter into a stage of emotional struggle. But during this period, we are awakened to God as He calls our attention to His invitation. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew chapter 11 verse 58 Morning opens the door to God's healing comfort, freedom, and wholeness. But our own choices determine whether our mourning will produce openness to God's dealings in life or bitterness as a result of that. Those who mourn also speak of people who express deep sorrow over sin or those who repent from their sins. Freedom attained through forgiveness of sins and joy of eternal life means comfort. To them. A person who is in true mourning, even to the point of weeping, is not concerned what other people think of him. He isn't trying to hide behind a mask of apathy. There is a wrong attitude or perception today that looks at weeping as a source of shame or embarrassment, as though the person lacks courage and integrity to hold oneself together. Grief and weeping are not to be looked down, but are necessary for healing and expressing authentic human empathy and emotion. Jesus himself manifested this attitude when he wept at the death of his friend Lazarus and the unbelief of the people. John chapter 11 verses 33 to 36. It was not only real comfort, to the grieving sisters, Mary and Martha, after seeing their brother came back to life. Mourning is likewise intended for the manifestation of God's glory when His power is displayed to unbelieving people. John chapter 11 verse 4 Our Lord Himself overcame death through His resurrection and therefore will bring us comfort consolation, and joy now until his return and will bring us laughter in the kingdom of God. Psalm chapter 30 verse 5 says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Let us conclude today's Sunday Whispers with this quote by Henry Nowen that says, In this crazy world, there's an enormous distinction between good times and bad, between sorrow and joy. But in the eyes of God, they are never separated. Where there is pain, there is healing. Where there is mourning, there is dancing. Where there is poverty, there is the kingdom. 
Thank you for joining us. We hope you have found wisdom and inspiration in today's episode of Sunday Whispers. Have a blessed Sunday. Until then. Thank you.